Okay guys, let's talk about making your monochromatic value scale. The first thing you want to do for our first value scale is mix six different hues ranging from dark gray to gray to light gray. Try not to have too many dark gray or light gray values. An even amount of both will do. Notice how I'm using the caterpillar method to mix my grays on my palette first. This lets me see and compare the different shades of paint before they're even on the page. Once you have all of your paints mixed, start to fill in the squares. Remember, you want to go slowly, take your time, paint le neatly. You don't want to have too little or too much paint on your brush. You'll know you have too little when you can start to see white space through your brush strokes. You know you have too much when you get those little mountains on either side of your stroke. Try and get just the right amount. You'll notice, as you've got, if you go back, your paint may have dried slightly. One way to bring it back to life is to add just a drop of water to that paint, but not too much. We don't want to make it liquidy. The idea behind the caterpillar method is that we can keep all of these paints when we move on to our next value scale. So save those paints, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get rid of them. Now, one thing to be mindful of is the paints are going to dry very quickly. So this will give you the opportunity to do second coats when necessary. Okay, let's get started on our monochromatic value scale. For my first block, I'm going to mix my black and my base color together. The base color that I've chosen for my project is blue. You wanna be sure to include three shades one pure hue and two, and excuse me, and three tints, an even amount of dark and light tones with the base in the middle to separate. This first block, you may not even see the color just because it's so much black compared to your blue. But as you move down to the shades, that blue should become more and more prominent. Use the gray that you mixed earlier, add a little bit of blue, and you're ready to start painting. Let's take a look as I fill in the rest of my hues. Your base color, excuse me, your base color should be at least four in, right in the middle. So first your black, then two shades, then your pure base. You'll notice I got a little bit of paint accidentally on my monochromatic. Don't panic. The beauty of acrylic is that you can layer it on top of each other. So if you feel like you make a mistake, simply wait, let it dry, and do another coat on top. Once you're done, double check your tones with the block that falls above. It should be just the same amount of dark or light. What I'm looking for is a smooth transition of value. Okay, let's get started on our sphere. For the cast shadow, we wanna use our shades. Notice how I'm using my shade right where it meets the sphere, transitioning to our base color at the end of our cast shadow, 
Remember, as the cast shadow goes away, it slowly disappears. Now, now we're going to learn about the blending technique. In the, the blending technique uses one brush to add the paint and one brush to blend the two together. This is called the wet on wet style and is a great way to create, again, that smooth transition of value without pushing the paint around too much. When I do the sphere, I start with my base as my core shadow. Followed by my tints. Remember, tints are colors mixed with white. So as I go up, I start to add lighter and lighter shades. Lighter and lighter colors. In between each color, I'm going to use my blending brush to help me create that smooth transition. In the end, I'm gonna add that highlight using my lightest tint. And my blending brush to create that smooth transition. And there we go. Now let's talk about our stippling sphere. Stippling works a little bit differently than blending. Stippling is just creating tiny little dashes or dots. This is a great way to capture the texture of grass, hair, clouds, pine trees, palm trees, any kind of vegetation. Many students, when they first begin painting projects, have a tendency to overblend. But in reality, we want to let the paint show through. We want to use the, this, what we call loose brushwork, to let that texture shine. So just like I did with the previous sphere, I'm going to use my base as my core shadow and my tint as my midtone and a, the lightest tint as my highlight. Don't be afraid to go outside the lines. It's okay to be a little bit messy when stippling. Hair doesn't just stop at our head, right? It goes above. We get those flyaways. You'll also notice that the direction of my marks echo the direction of my sphere. We want those marks to go upwards, curving in just a little bit at the top. Stay tuned as I finish my stippling sphere. Notice the direction of my, my marks. Notice the tiny little dashes. Okay, final touch-ups include one more layer in that shadow. Again, don't forget the layers. And we're all set. What I'm looking for on your spheres is that a, I see a prominent shadow, mid-tone, and highlight. And here we go, our finished assignment. Once complete, please photograph and add to your Google submission slide and turn in the physical copy. Good luck, and please let me know if you have any questions.